Today what we are going to learn is Taylor series. First find out what is Taylor series. Taylor series is written in a format e to the power x that is equal to 1 plus x by 1 plus x square 2 factorial x cube 3 factorial plus x4 4 factorial up to n times terms. This one this is also factorial. So as you can see this is what we call the Taylor series. In the previous lectures what I have explained is three types of recursion not three types of recursion basically three questions of recursion that is summation power and factorial. If you haven't watched this video, I will recommend you to watch all the three videos and then come to this question because this question won't be solved if you don't understand these three concepts. So in summation, so using recursion, this is very important, using recursion, this Taylor series, what we are solving of e power x is using recursion. So summation. Let's understand what summation in the previous video. I already have made a video you can watch in the i button. Uh, for summation, what we wrote in a summation recursion that the function was sum n is equal to sum n minus 1 plus n for power what we wrote was power x n minus 1 into x and for factorial what we wrote was fact n is equal to fact n minus 1 into n so these were the three so these are the three functions that we have to perform in this Taylor series we can see that the addition is happening that is summation is happening that's why we have written as summation i mean that's what we will take and we can also see that the power is also increasing one two three four and we have noticed that the in denominator the factorial is also increasing that is three three factorial four four factorial so we have took factorial and power also so let's take an example so let's see what's happening over here is what's happening over here is we are performing three operations that is summation power and factorial but we only want one result so for this we will use static variable static variable these points are very important please note it somewhere i'm just doing in a rough way I can provide the notes in the description so you don't have to write it down. So just chill and watch the video and uh, just make a rough note. That's what all you need. So back to topic. So I will take a static variable. Now in static variable what happens is the value that we write it keeps on changing. Like for now just understand this like static variable is a huge concept but in this we have to just consider this only so if you have multiple values in a recursion so i can use static variable you can also write this what i what i just said else just chill so i will let me repeat so if we have multiple values in a recursion then i can use static variable and yes we do have multiple values look like plus three four 5, 6, 7 and up to so on like summation is happening, power is happening and factorial is happening so we really need static variable because uh, we don't know what to store now because for summation it with the, the value will return would be different for power it would be different and for summation and for factorial it would be different what we need is we need combined value that is what would be the value of e to the power x that's why we have to create a function that has that will give as a result only one value so for that we have written static variable 
so static variable we need this so let's take an example for like four for four values like e to power x that is one plus x by one plus x to the power two upon two factorial x three upon three factorial plus x to the power four upon four factorial so let's see what's happening over here what's happening over here is nothing just see the power let's write it one and let's see what's happening if we see from here what's happening it keeps on decreasing have you noticed this and at returning time the values are adding added up to n terms like for now we are just taking four terms okay like this four plus one five so we can we have noticed that at returning time the addition is done and for calling time we are just decreasing the value so for this let's make a graph tree e to the power x by 4 we write exponential in this form i already have discussed in the previous video and then i will just call e to the power x 3 then this function will call 2 this function will call 1 and this function will call 0 and after this nothing okay guys let uh, let me just know what is e to the power x if x is 0 like uh, what is 2 to the power 0 we all know it is 1 oh okay 2 to the power 0 is 1 like 3 to the power 0 is 1 anything power to the power 0 is 1 so x to the power 0 is 1 although we don't know the value of x if we would have known the value of x then it would be have 1 so overall x to the power 0 is 1 it doesn't matter although for x to the power 0 doesn't matter so x to the power 0 is 1 now this at returning time this was the calling time now the function will go back and it will go to x comma 1 now it already has this already has one value now 1 plus what i want what i want at x by 1 what we want at x to the power 1 we want x by 1 so for this let me just explain you one simple concept that is a static variable guys now in static variable what will happen let's take the power as p what we have created we have created a variable and we have named that variable as p and uh, that variable is this power and let's create another variable name as factorial f so what happens in factorial it, the values of that is the denominator this is the numerator and this is the denominator and uh, we will take here in static variable for handling numerator and denominator i will take static variable this is very important so what is happening over here is x to the power 0 which is equal to 1 so the value is 1 now it goes to this now what happens over this is we want x by 1 what we want is x by 1 this is for numerator and this is for denominator we want x in numerator how we can get x as x in numerator we want x in numerator and 1 in denominator how can we get x in numerator we can get x in numerator by multiplying p to x that p is equal to p into x what was p initially let's assign p value initially to 1 and let's assign f value also 1 so what is happening over here is we got numerator as x like zabardasti hum log isme answer la rahe the theek hai hum log ko zabardasti lana hi padta hai ye maths x ho gaya ab hum log ko denominator mein kya chahiye 
for one what we have to do is yeah, we don't have to do we just have to write one like one multiply by one is one so f is equal to f into one okay so let me just write over here what is this it's p by f okay is it p by f how i just explained now what is p by f over here it's x by one now this p by f will return to this now what will be this x to the power 2 it will be 1 plus x by 1 plus now what we want we want x by 2 so now hi how can we get it not we don't want x by 2 we want x to the power 2 by 2 factorial so for that we will just multiply one more x over here and we will and for f we will write 2 that's it so x so what will happen x square by 2 similarly this function will return over here and what we want over here is x cube by 3 factorial and again we will multiply it by x then it will be x cube and we will multiply this by and we will multiply this 3 factorial like this f into 3 then it will be 3 factorial and this will return over here so this is the simple concept of Taylor series as it will return over here what will be the uh, what would be the returning value of e x by 4 the returned value would be 1 plus x by 1 plus x square by 2 factorial plus x cube by 3 factorial plus x power 4 upon 4 factorial this would be the value that we will got we will get to this so what happened over here power function summation function and factorial function we combined all these function and we got a single value this is the use of static variable that we have just done like what i have just explained so this is how it goes and in the next video i will teach you the how to write a static variable and i will write also the code like for taylor series and i will write the code for taylor series